the origins of a seven-week Advent are a little obscure. Uh, fixing the date of Advent is only four weeks, has only been around since the 19th century. It's been different lengths across different times. Unlike Lent, which has always held a six to eight week character since the fourth century, Advent has come and gone, uh, has been four weeks sometimes, six weeks other times. As a matter of fact, uh, during the Civil War in England, of course, Cromwell didn't want Christmas celebrated, so there was no Advent either. And once we, the monarchy was restored, Christmas was brought back, but people didn't know what to do with Advent. And at that time, it was be, being called a mini Lent, uh, a time of penitence before getting ready for Christmas. And uh, again, the number of weeks changed. It wasn't until really the 19th century and 20th century that we settled on four weeks. But something interesting happened with the introduction of the Revised Common Lectionary and the new lectionary of the Episcopal Church in the late 70s and early 80s. At that time, we decided that the very last Sunday of the church year, the Sunday before the first week of Advent, would be Christ the King Sunday. And we would observe a day when we declared Christ as King. He would be um, described in John's Gospel as the king before Pilate. And Pilate says, you are a king. And he says, well, you say I am. And then there's one year we have the reading from Luke where Jesus is on the cross. And one of the thieves says to him, who's also on the cross, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then the third year we have Matthew telling us about Jesus seated, seated on the throne, separating the sheep from the goats so that uh, he is the king who brings those who care for the lowly into heaven and sends away those who forget about them. Um, but in the two Sundays before that, we hear lessons about the second coming. And then right after, right after Christ the King Sunday, the very first Sunday of Advent, we're reading about the second coming in the Gospels again. So we've got three Sundays with one Sunday interrupted for Christ the King to talk about the second coming, and we're already into Advent? It seems we've already jump-started the whole process of observing Advent before we even got to Christ the King Sunday. So Bill Peterson, who for many years was the dean of uh, Bexley Hall Seminary, when he saw this and when he did his research on the history of Advent, realized that we really already are, in terms of our lessons, celebrating a seven-week Advent. Just by introducing the concept of the second coming as we prepare to remember the first coming, the birth of Jesus, um, just by introducing the second coming, we are already into a seven-week series of lessons which point us to Christmas. And so he developed, along with a number of seminary professors and a number of parish clergy as well, what's called the Advent Project. And you can find that online. Just type in your search engine, The Advent Project, and it'll come right up. And it'll bring you resources and ideas. But the point being is he's restored something in the history of the church about how we prepare for Christmas. And that we prepare for Christmas um, by not only remembering Jesus' first coming to us, but also about our hope for the second coming and how those two things are related. There are some churches who um, still observe a seven-week Advent. The Orthodox Church has, for many generations, observed a seven-week Advent. As to other branches of the communion, at different times and different points in history, uh, Advent has been anywhere from four to seven or eight weeks. Uh, right now, with the Advent Project, there are a number of Lutheran and Episcopal churches who have signed on to that project, St. Patrick's, Dublin included. And... Um, so the number of churches that are observing a seven-week Advent officially is beginning to grow. But in some ways, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. It has been around before, and in terms of our lessons, it has been around ever since we revised the Common Lectionary back in the early 80s. So in a sense, we're already observing it, whether we say it's Advent or not.